It's one of those situations that the hot money is there. Um, you know, the hot money is there. I think anybody who's waiting for the calendar to turn, you're going to be late to the party. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, having a great weekend. Hope everybody had a, a good uh, trading week. Um, this is by far my favorite um, week uh, of the year. Uh, we have a short trading week, which is always great. If you've been trading for a long time, those extra days off are really super important to kind of always you know, recharge the batteries. But what's great about this week, it starts off uh, a phenomenal holiday season. This time of year is always my favorite. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't see it that way. But uh, for me personally, I, I, know, I, I think I can speak for uh, a lot of people in the world, uh, this week is just a great family building uh, week. You have uh, Thanksgiving, which is awesome. You have a short trading week. Uh, again, for, at least for me, it's, it gives me an extra day to kind of relax and spend some time with the family, kind of recharge the batteries. You got football and you have my favorite, absolutely my favorite holiday uh, throughout the week of Thanksgiving, which again, I spent uh, the majority part of the last two, three weeks kind of just watching what I ate. Not crazy, believe me, I'm still off the wagon, but again, everything is setting up for this week that I literally try to gain 40 pounds in one day. But nevertheless, it is an awesome week. And for all you guys who are watching this broadcast for the first time or just on a weekend basis, um, I want to wish you guys a happy and healthy, most important, healthy, very, very healthy uh, start of your holiday season. Uh, may God continue to bless you and your family, and I wish nothing but happiness uh, for the rest of your life. So uh, hopefully you guys will have an awesome start uh, to your holiday weekend. So let, let's talk about the market. Um, from the technical point of view, first of all, the, the action has been super, I mean, just really super. I think that's the best way to just kind of end that, um, end that statement. Um, although the stocks that I trade um, as a group, and I think you can see that based on how the queues have been really going sideways now, and you're talking about now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're talking about two weeks, basically, of the queues going sideways and although the market has been incredibly hot i mean that's the I, I think that's the best way to say it the beta names right they've been good but they've been good one at a time and we'll get to that in a second the the speculation names in this market have been completely off the charts and and i hear traders uh talk about all the time wait till the january effect wait till the january effect. Well, what do you think has been happening since march right the January effect, where for all you new folks who don't know what that is, it's basically a lot of money flow into a lot of small cap, hot money capitalized stocks, you know, really big speculation money that people lose control and just chase prices. That's kind of been happening since basically since the bottom of March, where this whole uh, you know COVID thing really started. Uh, April was was probably the craziest month ever. Uh, and now we've just been kind of rolling along. So I, I think for all those people who are just waiting for the calendar to turn, to turn uh, January 2nd to get a hot market, you're in the hot market, okay? Um, you know, the date on the calendar is not going to, uh, you know, change your trading. The date on the calendar is not going to put extra commas in your bank account. You're in a hot market. This is your market. If you trade uh, speculation money in sp smaller capitalized names, well, what else do you want, right? I mean, what else do you want? It's like, again, it's like having a four-course dinner and the waiter's taking your plate and you're trying to lick off the last crumb off the plate. You know, how much more do you want? So I, I think if you've sat there for the last three, four months and waiting for this magical holiday se uh, session to start, that you, it's going to be your market. Well, unfortunately, I tell you, you missed it, right? This is it. This You're in this market. And all you need to do is look at the groups that have just been constantly going and going and going. I mean, these... Uh, EV stocks have been the absolute hottest names on the planet, right? I mean, they really are. I mean, look, NEO has been going absolutely crazy. NEO and stock, anything to do with 
uh, batteries, KNDI. And again, say what you want about these companies. A lot of them don't even produce a product that you can understand that you'll probably never even see in real life. But again, it doesn't make a difference. Our opinion means nothing. And when you're in a runaway train, and that's exactly where you are right now in these EV names, um, you're going to be put into a situation that you're going to say to yourself, well, I could either leave them alone, participate in the long side, which again, if you're on the long side, it's very, very tough cons considering some of these stocks have gone, for example, uh, like, like Candy Eye from 5 to 15, uh, or I can start shorting and try to pick a, pick a top. Uh, the only name that probably will work uh, on, on a short-term top is, is kind of like a solo. You know, solo, uh, Citron came out on Friday, turned around and said, well, the stock's a joke. The stock belongs at $2 a share. Okay, right, and they do have a heavy axe. You know, they do have a heavy axe. They do have a heavy following in the market, uh, and this name probably will start trickling down below uh, below ten dollars. You know, this week. But again, you got again the overall sentiment. It's not, nothing to do with tax solo one way or another. I couldn't care less about this name if it disappeared off the face of this earth. The moral of the story is people are chasing. Even you know these these SPAC names. Um, you know, uh, KCAC has gone on a you know really really big run and. Uh, uh, what else? What are the other names on there? Even put it this way, I trade beta. This week I started trading names. If you've been watching this broadcast, I, I've never would ever trade in your life. I even took a small over. I, I even took a small stock overnight, you know, and I've taken very, very, uh, very, very. Um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I, I, I took very, very rarely that I took any overnights this year. Uh, I, I don't even remember this. Oh, XXII, that's it. I, I even took a stock. You know, I even bought a stock like this, uh, you know, overnight. Um, I, I bought it at 98 cents. I, I, my last sale was like 117, and I was shocked, and I watched the stock go to uh, 180 this week. Uh, even even to, to the point of trying to facilitate myself, to put in myself in position to, to try to capture my own wave, in these, um, you know, these crazy energy names, the EV names. I even bought this thing on Friday. I bought this thing at ten dollars and fifteen cents, right? That's where it closed. It traded a little bit after hours, but I'm hoping this thing gets fine and maybe this thing goes up two, three dollars. So again, it's one of those situations that the hot money is there. Um, you know, the hot money is there. I think anybody who's waiting for the calendar to turn, you're going to be late to the party. So the key is don't chase these things, right? Uh, if you see a stock, for example, that goes from, you know, $2 to 11, okay, the last thing you should be doing uh, is buying the stock at 11. But but again, this is the market that kind of capitalize. And if you do trade these smaller names, this is where you, you can shine. Because again, these things do have a shelf life of what, two to three weeks throughout the year, you're in it, right? You're in it with an extension time zone. And again, if you do play these stocks, again, play them uh, very very responsible don't chase the stocks uh, that have gone already you know gone already you know ape you know look look at the laggards look at the ones that are coming out of channels that potentially could get hot and that's the name uh, of the game other than that if you look at the indexes um, pretty flat this week right um, Nasdaq composite closed up two tenths of a percent the Dow uh, and the S&P, you know, down a little bit, nothing to even, uh, you know, even write home about. And if you look deeper, I mean, really, really deeper in what's going on, especially in the diamonds, um, you know, you, you can see names like a Boeing, right, really taking big reins of, of what's going on. But again, if you look technically of where we close and what we've been doing now for the last three days, you can see there's something going to happen that, again, if you don't pay attention, and we talked about this on Wednesday's session. If you guys remember, on Wednesday's video into Thursday, we talked about this 290 level on the queues. Right now we're talking about the Dow, but we talked about the 290 level on the queues. That area over on there is gonna be very, very important. Any close below the queues, uh, you know, uh, above 290 is gonna be very, very bullish. Any close below 290 is gonna be very, very bearish. And if you guys remember, um, Wednesday, Wednesday night, we closed below 290. We opened down to like 287 and we reclaimed right away. But now we're kind of holding on to dear life. And, and I think that's going to be the more important macro view of what I think is going to happen this week. I think the speculation money this week is still going to be very, very obvious. There's going to be incredible rotation still uh, in these EV names, in these, uh, you know, in these charger names, um, you know, anything to do, uh, anything, you know, Bitcoin names, right? These Bitcoin names have been on fire as well, Riot and Mara. Uh, you know, a lot of these Bitcoin names have been as far. So the speculation money will be there. Okay. I, I, I have no doubt of that because there's no reason for them not to, because there is nothing that's going to materialistically change. If, you know, for example, these Bitcoin stocks, if, you know, Bitcoin goes down 5,000 in one day, are they going to have pressure? Sure, they will. But again, what's going to take that dynamic effect, right? What is going to cause that? And that's the most important part. I don't see any 
uh, leveraged selling pressure in the names that have been running. So you could see a continuation of these uh, stocks being uh, in bloom. But again, the more important of the general market, this is where the concern starts to, to kind of appear. So we look at the diamonds, you had two days in a row closing below the five day moving average. Again, for me, very, very short term sentiment. That's not good, right? And that's, again, nobody's saying we're gonna go to zero. We're just saying it's not good, right? We trade, we're traders. We trade both sides of the market. We don't care which way the market's going. Again, obviously I always prefer for the market to go higher because again, it's just more volume. There's more liquidity, right? When there's less people on the sidelines, you're gonna have less liquidity. So I always prefer the market to go up, but honestly, do we really care? A channel is a channel is a channel, whether it goes higher, whether it goes lower, it doesn't make a difference. So you had two days in a row, uh, closing below the five day moving average. And yesterday or Friday, was the first close below the 10. Again, if you believe in the theory, and especially if you trade the PS60 theory, you know that the 10-day the, the moving average is the birth of the trade. So if, if it's the birth of the trade to the upside, well, it has to be the birth of the trade to the downside. And the first close below the 10-day moving average, and you can see, again, where the measure potential is. Again, nobody's saying it's going to be Armageddon, we're going to go to the, to the lows. We're just talking about a nice, modest, gradual backtest potential. If we confirm uh, Friday's price action all the way down to this 288 level, which is not really a big deal because this is where the market uh, broke out. You can see where this is where the diamonds broke out. It'll only become a big deal if we start closing and start confirming 288. And then obviously we have a lot more room uh, to the downside. And the queues, for example, you look at the queues again, like I said, they've been doing absolutely nothing uh, for the last two weeks. I mean, over under, over under 290 has been the big spot. It's kind of holding on to that 290 level. But again, what we have to pay attention to this week is any close below 290. Again, then you start looking at prices 286, 285, and obviously to the 50 day moving average where, where exaggerated measure potential could affect. Now, again, all these things could happen. Like, for example, Friday you had some really good action. I, it didn't even dawn on me that the Dow was down 250 points to like two o'clock. So again, the indexes really doesn't matter. So it's almost like a moot point of dwelling on the indexes. But the last thing you want to do is be long equities over and over again. Say to yourself, ah, Dan said there's no, you know, there's no repercussions. Don't worry about it. Speculation money will flow. It's all, you know, it's all fun and games until somebody catches a sharp stick in the eye. Again, you have to be conscious where the indexes are and it might not affect you one day like a Friday because good speculation money is coming in. But if there is a buyer strike, believe me, you're going to feel it. Okay, you, we're not, we can't be that arrogant to think that our stock is gonna be immune uh, to any macro selling. So again, just to keep an eye uh, on the important levels, again, 290, uh, 290 over under on the close on the queues, super important on the diamonds. Uh, again, any, you know, if we start building below uh, this 292, 291 level, again, then you have measure potential of 288. Uh, if you look at the SPX uh, for this week, again, you know, two days in a row, right? You can see it two days in a row, right? Well, actually three days in a row, excuse me, three days in a row under the five day first close under the 10. Again, that's, that's a sell signal. It's not a buy signal. I'll give you my word. This is a sell signal. So if we start confirming down uh, 35, 42, then you have room. You have a lot of room all the way down to like 35, 14. Again, can you sit in your positions on the long side knowing that, hey, you have 30, you have a possible 30 handle back down uh, on a back test and be okay with it? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But again, at least you know, at least have conscious that this is on the table and this could happen. Again, maybe a stocks will be, you know, will be, will be left alone, but they probably wouldn't. Again, 30 handles on the SPX, right? It's not, you know, it's not a pimple, right? It, it could turn into something. So be very, very uh, conscious of where we are uh, from the point of a macro uh, standstill. Uh, overall, uh, this week uh, was very good. I mean, picking spots, very good. Tesla is a monster, still had a really good uh, res day on Friday. Um, although beta still, I, I wouldn't call them dead money because again, the queues were kind of going sideways, but the, the kind of cool thing about beta, and we saw that firsthand, uh, on Friday with a trade, for example, on Netflix, that this was my last trade of the week. Um, you can see this move here. You, you're, you're going to have pockets of really aggressive interval strength. And a lot of people, when you look at a chart, for example, uh, on a Netflix, you'll turn around and say, Dan, the stock, the chart sucks. It's terrible. You're right. It abs you're absolutely right. The greatest thing about the PS60 theory is we're trading those channels. So even though the chart looks terrible, right? If you look at this, 
right? If you look at all this and you say to yourself, wow, okay, it looks like it's about to go. And what it do? It put up a five, six dollar candle. And you're not going to see that in the daily charts. So we are getting pockets of strength in these names. They're not sell biased yet, although I'll give you a couple examples in a few minutes that I do like uh, this week if they do confirm, especially if the Qs and the Diamonds and the Spies start going lower. I like some setups on, on, the, on the short side. But, but again, because this market is so hot, they've been rotating one by one uh, into these, you know, into the beta names very, very slowly, but they have been rotating. So again, there's nothing going into the week that I like about Netflix, but again, on the intraday cycles, if you're patient, we are getting opportunities like we saw on Friday, really, really aggressive move uh, coming out of a channel. Um, stay at home names, uh, kind of a delayed reaction. And again, guys, and, and again, and I say this, I, I say this in the nicest way possible, okay, with the most respectful way possible. COVID is real, okay? Anybody who keeps on saying, stop talking about COVID. Okay, you know what? Let's click our heels, close our eyes, you know, say a prayer and this thing's gonna go away, okay? <laughs> Grow up, it's here, okay? We just gotta figure out how to live with it, okay? So when we talk about the stock market in regards to COVID, we're talking about something that's, that's literally affecting the economy, our friends, our neighbors, our family, maybe ourselves. So again, the idea of stop talking about COVID already. Okay. Okay. You want to grow up or you want to be, continue to be a baby. Okay. It's real. Learn with it, deal with it again, move on. But from the point of the trading aspect, you finally saw this week how a name like Zoom finally woke up again. How if a name like Docu finally woke up again. How a name like Peloton uh, finally woke up today. Because again, that is the theme. So you, you could say what you want about COVID, this made up disease that's really not real. Okay. Okay. But again, the stocks are still going to participate. Okay. The stocks that are, are being affected both positively and negatively because of COVID are still going to trade and they're going to trade very, very aggressively. So I like the COVID names going into this week. It's one of the groups that I do like because again, like for example, us in New Jersey, we're, we're getting on, on the average of the last two weeks, like 3,800 new cases a week. So that's not a, you know, that's not small potatoes. Uh, the school system, uh, at least my kids are virtual till indefinitely, right? Um, and again, we're, we're watching very, very closely how going forward, especially these two weeks, is going to be crazy. Again, the, you know, the, the, the Fauci, I believe, uh, turned around and said he wouldn't suggest mass travel. But again, this is the holiday season. People are going to be traveling. So these next two to four weeks, you know, we're going to have a huge spike in COVID. So again, you could turn around and say, stop talking about it. Okay, I, you know, it's like me turning around and saying, you know what, I'm going to stop talking about my mother-in-law. She's still there. She's still batshit crazy, right? She doesn't go away because I stopped talking about her. So that's the whole point of COVID, okay? It's our part of our lives. So again, we have to be intelligent enough and just be responsible enough to kind of live with it. So these names are going to be in play as well. So going into this week, um, index-wise, I am... I am cautious on the index wise, but it, but again, I don't think it's going to affect anything. I really don't. I, I don't think it's going to affect your long trading because these speculation names are going to be still very, very good. Um, these stay at home names, they're basically like a day or two really confirming back macro uh, to the upside. Although, for example, like Peloton had a really nice move uh, off the bottom channel. It's still, as you can see here, it still needs to confirm this channel. If it does, look at the hot pocket potential it has, right? If you look at Zoom, even though it had a really, really great run this week, and again, this is a five-day move uh, from 375 to 540. Think about this. It still has to confirm this whole channel here just to get back to 471. And obviously, any close over 471 starts a really, really big ma macro move. So again, they're not out of the woods yet, but you can see the potential if they start confirming these levels where they can go. But again, on the flip side, let's start talking about some ideas that I do like to the downside as well. So if you look at NVIDIA, for example, and you'll see if you go through charts, how many names are really, really close to really breaking down. You can see their measure potential, right? So if we're starting to see uh, weakness in the queues and they start losing uh, that 290 level, again, look at the names that just didn't rally for the last couple of weeks. And you can see the channel here in NVIDIA. Look, look how many times it held this rising support. So if it confirms down, look how much room it has, right? This thing literally has, what, 25, 30 points to the downside? Look at Boeing, had a monster, monster run, right? Huge, huge run off the bottom. Uh, you know, went from 141 uh, to 223. Look at the 60 minute view, right? Look, look how tight, guys, look how tight this thing is getting. 
Okay, look how tight this thing is getting on rising support. If this rising support loses, right, you have, again, your first move is not going to be huge, maybe, you know, four or five bucks, but you have a lot of potential, again, especially if the market confirms down. Again, remember, we're not, we're not guessing where they're going. Okay, we have a channel here. We're going to be watching that channel. And if it confirms, then it becomes a sell signal. If not, then Boeing's going to turn around and start going higher. So it's very, very important uh, to wait for confirmation. Um, so I, I think this week, number one, generally is going to be really good action. Again, you have uh, three you have um, three full trading days. Wednesday, you're going to see the volume uh, really start shrinking up. And I think it's very, very important to understand that a lot of people will be traveling again. People do spend time with their families, especially uh, on the holidays. So again, it's kind of a risk reward to everybody's um, scenario. You know, you catch COVID if you don't, catch, you know, if you, if you, you know, if you probably put yourself in a situation of a mass travel. Okay. I mean, that's again, everybody's personal choice. And I respect that. I, I, I there's no judgment. Okay. Everybody needs to live their life. If you want to live your life the way you want to live your life, there's no excuses. To, you know, you don't deserve an explanation to anybody. And that's where I'm, I'm kind of just drawing that line. You don't need to explain to me. You don't need to explain to Joe Blow on Twitter. Uh, whatever you do, just make sure you do it responsibly and carefully. So uh, let's talk about uh, Friday's session. Uh, very aggressive. Um, you know, very, very aggressive session. Uh, Snapchat. Uh, finally broke out uh, 32.90.43 needs to build uh, Snapchat, you know, really had a really big move, right? So it took out this whole channel here. And again, it's not a 52 week high. That's the whole point of what we talk about uh, sneaky pivots. It confirmed this channel here and traded right back here into supply uh, into the 44.30s. Obviously, the macro break will be above this 45.60 channel. Great job for all you guys who bought it, who are still in it for uh, a run. Uh, Roku broke out really aggressively this week. Uh, here was kind of like the cherry on top. 258 needs to build. And again, here's a perfect example of beta names just literally going one by one. Um, so 258 was right here. Pretty basic stuff. 258 uh, traded all the way up to 266. Uh, big move. And yeah, Roku looks higher. They, had that, they, they struck that deal, I think, with HBO, uh, HBO Cinemax. Um, NET continues to be good. It's an awkward trader, but 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 it, again, it, it's still pointing the right direction. 67, 67 and a quarter uh, needs to build. Uh, not a big move at all. Not a big move. Uh, it took you know it took out that area, traded the 68, 20, right up about a buck or so. Again, still looks good. Again, as long as it keeps on hugging this rising trend line, uh, it's good to go. And again, any strength in this name should get it to seventy dollars. Uh, so nice move there. Uh, Netflix was was beautiful. Again, it, it, and here's the here's the whole point. Um, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So if, again, if you looked at the Netflix chart, you're saying to yourself, man, this is one ugly chart and you'd be right. But beauty's in the eye of the beholder. If you do trade channels with us, and that's what we do, we trade channels. I knew how important this whole channel was. And, and if you look at the notes, uh, 489 has been rejected three times. It needs to build. Note, there is a little bit of supply at 40, uh, uh, 490 50 but if it can reclaim 41, it's a, it, it's a stretch. It's going to stretch. And that's exactly what Netflix did. Took out this whole level here uh, and traded right to uh, the 495 level. Yeah, really nice way to end the week. Uh, again, here's, you know, here's an example of uh, you know, stocks that are just re reacting in the same group. Uh, you know, this is the, the trade. Uh, this is the pivot we put in, uh, in the feed on Friday afternoon. Uh, excuse me, on um, Thursday. Thursday afternoon. Uh, BLDT macro play. Okay, any close over 1790. Uh, can confirm macro again. Same group as um, same group as fuel cell and beautiful move. It closed above 1790, right? Closed above uh, the area of supply and traded all the way up to 1960. Again, here's the area of supply of 1790 that I talked about, and really, really nice move. Again, if if this thing could just confirm, you know, 1975, 20, you could you potentially have a move to 21, 22 dollars. If all you guys are still holding it. Uh, great job is there. Uh, HCAC, keep an eye on this thing, guys. It, it, again, this is my point of I'm trying to find names that haven't gone yet in this EV space. Keep an eye on this HCAC. Uh, if it starts building above 11, it can go. Uh, so Roku is very, very strong. Um, new highs coming up there. Uh, again, we started seeing some volumes, you know, kind of getting tight towards the morning, and then things just woke up again. Uh, Docu was really good. I took a scalp on, on Docu as well. Uh, 223 needs to build. Uh, Zoom woke up, so Docu woke up as well. Here is Docu. Uh, it took out the 223, which is a previous day's high. If you look at the macro channel, you can see here, right? Took out this whole channel. Uh, went to about 226 and change, so that was good for good cash flow. Uh, yeah, so this is the stock I bought. I bought the stock at the 1015. 
Um, again, you know, who knows? You know, if these things, if these things are still, you know, keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts building 1030 or so, maybe it goes. Yeah, I bought a 1015. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. Again, I don't do a lot of overnights. Um, I'm an intraday trader. I trade channels because there's so much range. But again, this thing, yeah, I took a shot. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to risk, you know, 20 cents on this thing. Who knows? Maybe I catch lightning in a bottle uh, and this thing explodes. Um, Netflix, again, great move there. Uh, KCAC, I still like for this week, you know, around the 2150, 2175 level. So, you know, really productive week. Um, Tesla, you know, Tesla, you know, I hate to say this. I hate to say this, Tesla bears, close your ears, right? It's just resting. I'm telling you, it's resting. Um, you know, had a major upgrade, got added to the S&P 500. Uh, Goldman Sachs, I believe, was very, very, had a very bullish note on this thing on Thursday talking about that the index managers have to own this thing. If you are run an index S&P fund, this has to be your portfolio. So again, folks, this is the most hated stock ever to be added to the S&P 500. And if it starts confirming this channel here, that it's gonna run to the top and look how much room you have to the daily, right? You have a lot, but again, we don't anticipate, okay? Never anticipate, uh, always look at levels and wait for them to confirm. So guys, uh, for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar, uh, please get there around 9 a.m. Eastern time. We start morning strategy. Uh, for all you guys who are just watching us on the YouTube platform, I want to wish you guys a happy and healthy and beloved holiday season. May God continue to bless you. Guys, have a great, great week and love you. And I wish you all the best.